Hey, gentlemen, thank you for having me on. I just wanted to kind of share, you know, from this perspective, I've performed neurological exams on quite a few patients over uh, my years. And when you're looking for somebody who's either had head trauma or maybe has had a stroke, even people with uh, dementia, which is another form of neurological damage, there's certain things that you look for. <clears throat> and my wife, when she saw Errol Spence enter the ring, she asked me, she's like, he looks like he's on marijuana. And I told her, I said, he has residual neurological damage from his car accident that people are, people have commented on this, but people, if you don't have the experience doing this, you're not going to pick up on it. So one of the things when you're doing a neurological exam on somebody, you look at, there's like a, a glassy look to a person's eyes when they have either a concussion or they have advanced stages of dementia. And if you compare video of Errol Spence before his accident, just do a little assessment on the eye exam of what I'm telling you. It is apparent. I mean, it is honestly, it is embarrassing how obvious it is that he has significant, he's significantly compromised. So what I would say to this is just think back to what they did to Muhammad Ali when they let him fight with Parkinson's. Uh, people will let somebody get into the ring even though there is obvious issues with their ability to perform in the, a boxing match. So further evidence of this is listen to his speech patterns, start comparing his speech patterns before his accident to after. There is a distinct difference in his enunciation. I know part of that is because he has dentures, but even just listen to how he is formulating his words, his thought process, he's much, much slower. Now, another component to a sign of advanced neurological damage is a loss of balance. Uh, that's why, as people age, primary cause of injury for older people is falls. And that's because as the nervous system degrades, the communication to the, the musculoskeletal system is also compromised. So a lot of the, the signs that people associate with aging as people get into the 30s in boxing or even sports, it's the first thing to go is your neurological system. So when people talk about timing, and if you kind of listen to what even Spence was saying, Spence doesn't even know what he's saying. He's just commenting that. He's like, oh, my timing was off. My timing was off. That is because his brain is not the same. Now, of course, you can add on to that alcohol abuse. Sure. What is going on, Fight Fans? It's your man, Tate the Visionary. You are now tuned in to Black Cold Boxing. We back with another video. Now, recently, about a month ago, I did the fight recap, not the recap, my prediction for the Earl Spence versus Terrence Crawford fight. Y'all heard my breakdown. You all heard that I had Terrence Crawford winning that fight. Um, I got a lot of feedback, and I appreciate the feedback. Over 25,000 views in about three weeks. I got a bunch of hate. I got a bunch of people saying that I was biased, but, you know, I just say thank you for the viewership. I had a lot of people hating uh, on my prediction, but uh, I wanted to do a quick recap and cover some things, right? But first, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up. I got the I got the fish on my plate here. We just gonna, you know, take some of that hot sauce there, you know, you know. You feel me? I gotta I gotta put some hot sauce on that fish right there, you know. Just get a little bite of that. Mmm. Mmm. That tastes good. It's enough fish for everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't really like too much hot sauce, but you know, just for the celebration, we needed to put some hot sauce on it. You feel me? But anyway, let's get back to the point. Shout out to Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence for putting on a great a great performance. But this is really for my haters. Saying that I didn't know what I was talking about. So, as I usually do, I took a couple of notes on a few points that I wanted to mention, right? In my previous video about the Earl Spence Terrence Crawford fight, I said that one of Earl Spence's weaknesses was that he was susceptible to the 2-1, a.k.a. the swivel jab, right? What was the first shot, the first combination that knocked Earl Spence down? 
It was the swivel jab. One, he's going to throw that two, and then he's going to throw that one. As soon as Earl Spence turns on the inside, he's going to get hit smack dead in the nose with that two-one combination. And the thing that makes this two-one so deadly for Terrence Crawford is that when he throws the one, the jab, the jab after the two, it kind of turns the jab into like a power jab. The two-one combination, right? What did I say about Earl Spence? When he fights, he moves in a linear direction. He moves backwards. He moves forward. Earl Spence does not utilize angles that well. So when he got caught with that swivel jab, it was going backwards. It was going backwards. You feel me? And I just felt like that was one of the weaknesses um, that he just had in that fight. I also told you guys that Errol Spence doesn't have a lot of head movement. Um, Errol Spence has bad head movement. Um, I'm not going to say he has bad head movement. He just doesn't have a lot of head movement. And I don't really think that's good against a fighter who has fast hands. You cannot fight a fighter that has faster hands with you moving in a linear direction with no head movement. Errol Spence has a great jab, but what he does not do is that he does not combine his defense with his offense, right? When he throws the jab, he doesn't take his head off the line at the same time. That's something that he might want to do for the future. Um, what else did I say? I said that Terrence Crawford was an excellent fighter off the back foot. Earl Spence is not. We seen the moment Earl Spence started moving backwards in the fight, I knew that the fight was over. The moment he started moving backwards, I knew that it was over because now he completely gave up his strength, right? Moving forward, he's a come forward fighter. He completely gave up his strength, so no other combination that he could have thrown was going to be effective because he was doing something that he doesn't usually do. Terrence Crawford, on the other hand, Exceptional fighter, amazing at moving backwards and fighting off the back foot. I seen Terrence Crawford land punches, hooks in this fight off the back foot that he should not have been able to land at the range in which he was. But Terrence Crawford does a phenomenal job at creating separation, at creating space between him and his opponent so that he can land those unorthodox shots. In the beginning of my last video, I told you all that um, that Terrence Crawford has never fought a southpaw out of orthodox. Terrence Crawford has never fought a southpaw in orthodox, right? So with that being said, I believe that this fight will be fought southpaw versus southpaw. So as soon as this fight started, a lot of people were surprised that Terrence Crawford didn't start off as an orthodox. But why would he do that? This is the most important fight of his career. He came out there in South Paul, just like I told you all that he would. Just like I knew that he would. Right? So, let's touch on some other things. And it's not going to be a long video, by the way. Just got to touch on some key points. Uh, another thing I told you all, you didn't believe me. Sometimes Earl Spence has the habit of being front foot heavy. Definitely he can be front foot heavy. Front foot heavy and also said not only was Terrence Crawford good at fighting off the back foot, but if Errol Spence is front foot heavy in this fight, then he's going to leave himself open to the Terrence Crawford counter uppercut. Last weakness I have for Errol Spence is that he is front foot heavy when he throws the backhand, when he throws that two. Um, which is what I believe will leave him open against Terrence Crawford when Terrence Crawford takes that step back and he throws that counter uppercut. That was the shot that caused the second knockdown in the fight. You had Earl Spence throwing a, uh, a overhand left, putting all his weight on his front foot. Now he had Terrence Crawford's against the ropes, but again... Terrence Crawford is a phenomenal counterpuncher. And guess what he did? He counterpunched, he counterpunched him with the uh the lead uppercut. Knocked him down off that shot. Um 
And that was just two of the knocks down. The, the swivel jab, I told you that 2-1. And that counter uppercut uh, basically sealed the deal. Now, I don't want to stick too much. I don't want to focus too much on the uh, actual details of the fight. Because we all seen what happened. Um, I just wanted to give that quick video. What I did want to mention real quick, man. Leading up to the build up in this fight. The build up leading up to the fight, man. I heard a lot of you guys, a lot of you YouTubers, shame on y'all, talk bad about Terrence Crawford. Y'all gave so much hate to Terrence Crawford. Y'all talked about his body. Y'all talked about how he looked trained. Y'all talked about how he tried to hype himself up. As if it's a problem with a fighter hyping himself up for the biggest fight of his career. Y'all nitpicked at everything Terrence Crawford did. At everything Terrence Crawford said. Y'all talked about his resume. And if you all know anything about boxing, the resume don't really matter when we talk about styles. Because styles makes fights. The resume don't matter at that point. You can say, well, who has he fought? It doesn't matter. He has the style to compete. You can eyeball a fighter during a fight and you can say, oh, he's somebody. Who has Jerron Boots in his fault? Right? Who has Shakur Stevenson fault? Right? But we can eyeball these fighters and we can tell you that these are exceptional fighters. These are good fighters. So why all of a sudden when it comes to Terrence Crawford, now the resume matters so much. Now it's that important. Don't mean a thing. It means nothing. Right? Um, and then I see you guys get on social media after the fight and say, oh, I was, I was wrong. I can admit that I'm wrong. Multiple times. You all don't say, damn, I was wrong about the prediction one time. You get online day after day and say, man, just a reminder, guys, I was wrong. See, if you got to get online and talk about how wrong you are and constantly remind people of how wrong you were, then that probably means that you were doing too much. You were doing a little bit more than giving a prediction. You were flat out hating on a fighter. Shout out to them both. Terrence Crawford has been in my top five for a long time right now. Uh, Errol Spence is one of my favorites. Um, man, this fight is exactly what I thought it was going to be. The only thing that I didn't think it was going to be was a blowout, was a total domination. But the guy I had winning is the guy that won. But see, I don't need to get online. And at, at no point, look at the Rivera fight I did. I did my prediction on uh, Frank Martin fighting Rivera. I had Rivera win in that fight, and I was wrong with my prediction. But did you see me get online and say, oh, man, you guys, I was wrong about the Frank Martin prediction. I didn't have to do that. Why? Because I never talked down on Frank Martin. Half of you guys have never stepped foot in a boxing gym, let alone get inside the ring. But you have so much to say about these fighters. If you don't think he's going to win, then that's fine. But to bash these fighters video after video after video... You guys are way too emotionally invested into fighters that don't know anything about you. Right? So, that's what I wanted to say, man. I, I hope you guys learned a valuable lesson from all the talking that y'all was doing, the trash talking. Um, I wish the best of luck to Earl Spence, right? Now... I'm I'm at a split right now, man. My my heart is just going in two separate ways. Cause the boxing fan in me would love to see the rematch at 154. The boxing fan in me would love to see Earl Spence come back and just have this this rocky moment where he just dominates. Right? But the humanitarian in me says there's something suspicious about this fight. There's something wrong. With the performance that I've seen Earl Spence put on. And before you all say that I'm taking any credit away from Terrence Crawford. Hear me out. Again, I had Terrence Crawford winning this fight. I was rooting for Terrence Crawford to win this fight. Right? So I have no, no motive to take anything away from him. 
But I've known Earl Spence to be a durable guy. And for some reason, it seemed like every shot that Terrence Crawford landed on Earl Spence hurt Earl Spence. Very unlike Earl Spence to be hurt by every shot that he gets hit with. Um, Earl Spence's demeanor seemed a little timid in the fight. Uh, at first, I thought it was just, you know, the nerves, the biggest fight of his career. He's about to be undisputed. At first, I thought it was just that. But I don't know, man. Like, I was recently on, uh, what's his name? BDA Boxing. You guys go check out his video about Errol Spence and Dr. 805. I was on his page and I was listening to Dr. 805. He was a, a gerontologist, which is which is a, a doctor that basically does uh, studies on the elderly people and watch how age affects them uh, throughout their life. But Dr. 805 basically got on BDA's boxing page and says that uh, he thinks that um, Errol Spence is suffering from some type of neurological brain damage, uh, residual effects from his car crash, I believe, which was back in 2018 after his fight against Sean Porter. Um, it was a couple things that he had mentioned, man. You know, he said it was weird how the uh, the doctor ringside got into the ring, uh, even though at that point Earl Spence didn't take any critical damage. And he got in the ring to check out Earl Spence. Um, and then he implied that there may be some foul play uh, with the Nevada Athletics uh, Commission, Nevada State Athletics Commission, saying that um, some guys probably knew that Earl Spence was not fit to fight um, and that uh, they allowed him to fight anyway off of a uh, monetary gain. Now, I'm not saying that that's true. I can't say that that's true. I don't want to say that his trainer did him a disservice by allowing him to fight when they knew there was a problem with him. I'm just saying this is a speculation. But because of the way Earl Spence looked in this fight, I'm going to keep an open mind. I don't care what you guys say. I know you you guys got your panties in a bunch. You're going to be emotionally invested. You're going to talk trash. I don't care. I'm going to keep my mind open uh, because I think that Earl Spence did look a, a lot off in this fight. Uh, I expected Terrence Crawford to put on a great performance, but I have never seen Terrence Crawford dominate any fighter the way he just dominated Earl Spence. And I think that is that is very strange, you know, to dominate your toughest opponent. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, I expected him to win. I expected him to look good. But we also have to keep in mind that Earl Spence has great defense. I even said it in my last video. Earl Spence has great defense. I even told you um, that Earl Spence would have a much longer and healthier career because of his defense. Regardless of who wins or loses this fight, I believe wholeheartedly that Errol Spence will have a much longer and healthier career. Well, where was Errol Spence's defense in the fight? Right? You don't just forget your defense. So then I heard other guys say that, um, you know, Errol Spence didn't have any you know, brain damage or anything like that. No neurological uh, effects or anything affected him. But then they say Earl Spence didn't spar for the last six weeks leading up to the fight. Right? So now I'm like, wait a minute. He wasn't sparring either? And they said he wasn't sparring because he had a rib injury. So then it makes me think. So... The commission would allow him, they wouldn't allow him to fight if he had a brain injury. But they would allow him to fight even though he had a rib injury? I don't know, man. That just sounds kind of weird to me. You guys tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, do you feel like the fans are just making excuses for Earl Spencer's loss? Do you feel like even if you feel like they are making excuses, let me ask you this and be honest. Do you feel like Errol Spence looked the same as far as his defense is concerned, right? As far as the way he reacted to taking those shots, right? Do you feel like he looked the same in those situations? Because I don't. But I'll tell you what. 
you guys stick around. And if it doesn't violate any of YouTube's policies, I'm going to upload, you know, a little small clip of what Dr. 805 had to say and just get you all's perspective on it. Um, other than that, that's all I have for you guys today, man. So um, if you if you like the content, please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, share the comment, hit that notification bell, because like I said before, I'm trying to do this a lot more often. But shout out to both of these fighters. Um, I pray the best for both of these fighters. Uh, I would love to see the rematch if, and that is only if, Earl Spence is in, um, is in good health. And, um, yeah, man, if, if not, then he might need to consider retiring. He had a great career. Much respect to him. Much love to him. And that's it, man. So, peace. Until next time, Black Cold Boxing. See y'all later.